Facebook, as you heard from the previous speaker, I think you heard everything there is to know about square kilometer array, and then he kept saying, I was going to say this, and I was going to say that. And so I have a hard time ahead of me, but I'll see what I can do. I'll take a slightly different twist. What I'm going to show you is something that uh, we've been working with uh, folks at Astron, the Netherlands group. And we have created this uh, movie. We're taking you back to the uh, origin. And what you're looking at is. Uh, is Astron, together with national and international partners, is busy developing the world's largest radio telescope called LOFAR. For radio astronomy, LOFAR marks an entirely new era. LOFAR consists of a central site and 100 small antenna fields within an area of 350 kilometers in diameter. These antenna fields are situated in the northern part of the Netherlands, in the provinces of Friesland, Groningen, Drenthe, Gelderland and Overijssel, reaching well into Germany. The radio antennas at these antenna fields are all linked by an ultra-high speed glass fiber connection, which leads to a sophisticated central supercomputer. That's what uh, Francis Harkar asked, this is the answer to what they're doing. The supercomputer combines the antenna signals, causing the whole to function as a single telescope. A telescope of no less than 350 kilometers wide. is approximately 2 meters. The total number of antennas amounts to 25,000. These antennas will be divided among 100 sites, each 200 meters long and wide. Half of the antennas will be placed at the central location, measuring close to 320 hectares. The first prototype of the LOFAR antenna has been developed by Astro. industrial party producing about 25,000 antennas, starting in 2004. A low-bar antenna works just like an ordinary radio antenna. It captures radio signals and converts these into an electronic signal. Because it has to capture very weak signals from the universe, the sensitivity of a low bar antenna is substantially better. signals into electronic signals. Because of this, we are able to transmit electronic signals over great distances and analyze these in one or more computers. In order to transmit the signals to the supercomputer, high quality glass fiber connections must be installed between the low far sites and the central supercomputer. Before sending signals to the glass fiber connection, Electronic signals must be converted into light. This conversion is done in dedicated equipment, designed and developed by Astron. The low-bar antennas are very special. Instead of being large dish antennas, they're flat and small. As a dish antenna is physically aimed as an object for making an observation, the flat low-bar antenna is able to capture radio signals from all directions. The dedicated supercomputer combines all signals, and as a result one could say that all antennas combined look in a specific direction. It's not earlier than the computer that it is determined from which direction the telescope receives signals. LOFAR is the first radio telescope that works in this way. They do the similar processing to generate the images, which is what uh, I was uh, referring to earlier. The total data volume to be transmitted through the glass fiber network is huge. 20 terabit each second, which equals 20,000 gigabit each second. This can be compared with transmitting over 600 DVD movies. 
discs or more than 4,000 CDs in only one second. This means that it will by far be the fastest internet worldwide. Companies in the Northern Netherlands can benefit economically from this worldwide fastest internet connection. After all, it can be used in a wide variety of fields. For example, for opening up business parks and various public institutions, such as hospitals, municipalities, and educational institutions. Not only the antennas of the Lofar network are interesting from a technical point of view, the central supercomputer is a major challenge as well. Thanks to the large Vestibul radio telescope, Astron has many decades of experience in designing and building these large types of enormous calculators. Because the Lofar telescope is 350 kilometers in diameter, the network of glass fiber connections is very impressive. The central supercomputer is linked to a fast internet connection, enabling astronomers to work with it, wherever they may be. In short, the commercial applications combined with the technical challenges and scientific curiosity make LOFAR a unique project. Of course, Astron's final object is making new astronomical observations possible by means of constructing this telescope. LOFAR will detect types of signals that have not yet been researched in a systematic manner. This means that we will presumably make completely new discoveries. <laughs> we have now returned close to the moment of the universe coming into being. Images never seen before. LOFAR enables us to see them. And perhaps we will then be able to answer questions like how did the universe come into being? How are stars and planets being formed? And how was hydrogen formed in the universe billions of years in the past?
sent over to the supercomputer, which processes the signal. I'll show you the examples of what they get when they process the signals. And effectively gives them a, a, an aperture size, which is, of course, uh, the combined size of the array, which is obviously much larger than they could do with the, the single antenna review. So let me get out of this. To the last part of the uh, presentation, where I will describe to you some of the antennas we're work working with, both in the uh, Netherlands as well as in Australia that was uh, mentioned in uh, the summing up uh, talk. So this is the uh, introductory thing. You already saw this picture here. And here we have the, the, the Big Bang. And of course, uh, uh, we're going to probe the so-called dark ages. Uh, and we have uh, galaxy evolution, cosmology, and the dark energy, which was also mentioned, and the cosmic magnetism. Okay. Uh, so, of course, our friend Einstein is there, and the reason he is is because we're looking at uh, way back, let's say something uh, many, many light years back, and as we know, that the edges of the universe are receding very fast, and that creates the red shift. And in order to observe that signals that originated way back in those dark ages, we need to go down to low frequency. This has never happened before, and this is the reason NOFAR is playing such an important role. Okay. And of course, as was mentioned many times uh, before, that we were trying to explore the unknown. Of course, some don't believe in Big Bang Theory or Revolution, so I thought I'd show you this. But in any case, uh, here is Western Australia, and the location being uh, chosen, uh, we have not finalized yet. Maybe it will be in this, in this area, and the, and the reason is uh, that it's radio quiet. Compared to Sydney, which is, which is not as noisy a city as uh, in terms of uh, radio interference as in some of the others, this one is uh, uh, several hundred times less. So that's really quiet. And this is where symbolically it shows all these uh, signals that are collected. Then the correlator sits somewhere else. Okay? So you, you go send all these signals to the correlator, and that's how you form the images, which I'm going to show you some examples of. Uh, this is one of the antennas, and this is the one that we're working with uh, with the Australian group. And uh, you see this this uh, array that goes in here. It's a very interesting concept that uh, you measure the signal in the focal plane region with this array, then you send all of that information to the processor, which then creates the image. Let me show you some, some examples. Uh, now, the, this antenna is very interesting design. It's like a tabletop. This is what you're looking at is the tabletop with the path, and it has four legs. And those legs form the transmission lines, and then back by the low noise amplifier. Uh, uh, the, uh, there's a lot of uh, design kind of uh, tricks that, that they have to, to do in order to uh, analyze as, uh, as well as uh, design in a manner such that it matches the uh, low noise amplifier and beats and, and so forth. And they have to be very sure that the uh, simulation. It's correct because it's very expensive to build these guys. Here are some of the examples that you probably saw earlier as well. And this is the uh, uh, array that we saw earlier, the, uh, the body. Uh, so I'm going to just flip through these very quickly. We saw the low frequency. And then this is the one that's being built in the uh, uh, Netherlands, which is a different concept. Here we have a big dish. and then the uh, 
feed region of the big dish is, is this array. So there are two different types of them. Now here is the, uh, the Vivaldi array. And now you're looking at uh, um, a hardness of it. And this is what makes life difficult for the people who are trying to model and, and simulate the until as we need to develop special techniques for analyzing such very large arrays. And this is the thing that's already been. <laughs>